What's up YouTube and Insta fans? This is gonna be our second video of our new YouTube series, which is gonna be specifically about taming and socializing Asian water monitors. So we'll be hanging out with Xander in the cage while we do this, cover a couple of topics, and then here in a little bit, we'll actually get a chance to feed him some quail and medium rat. What's up, buddy? So the first thing we're gonna go over uh, is actually the cage setup. And a lot of people that post these videos online for socializing and taming Asian water monitors, uh, they never really talk about the actual cage setup. So I wanted to talk about this first. You guys might be thinking, what does cage setup have to do with taming these awesome guys into being giant, tame, amazing dragons? You know, they won't bite or scratch or tail whip. And uh, we'll jump right into it. So the reason that I say that a cage setup is really important for taming an Asian water monitor is depending on how you build your cage when these guys are babies or, you know, adults, depending on what age you get them. I recommend everyone gets them whenever they're hatchlings if they can. What The reason I say it's really important, um, I actually drew a diagram for you guys right here. So check this out. So first for cage setup, do's and don'ts. Do build a cage with front visibility, just like I have right here, for example. You know, we have a window over here. We got a glass sliding door right here. Obviously this is, you know, a more expensive type cage. If you had a, you know, hatchling cage, um, I can give you an example right here. Something that's a lot smaller for a, a baby hatching water monitor. If you have a cage with visibility right here, I drew a little eyeball, meaning that you can see through it. That's awesome. Thumbs up to you guys. Same thing with this cage right here. I drew a little eyeball because you can see through the front of the cage. That's one of the most important parts, I think, because you want your water monitor to be able to see you and for you to see him, how he's interacting without you surprising him, right? So if, if for example, this, let's just say that the cage was the size of this window right here for a, a hatching water monitor. And let's say that this was completely covered and that was the door and the door opened outward, like it folded and there was hinges down here at the bottom. If your water monitor was on the other side of that and it's completely covered, when you open the cage, most of the time you're gonna startle the guy. And that's the opposite of what you wanna do whenever you're taming and uh, socializing, right? So you gotta make sure that you can see through, that they can see you and it uh, makes it a lot easier. I think that's the first step. But don't, don't build a cage with a roof lid. Now, I've seen plenty of people that have built cages online, especially for young water monitors that have a roof lid. I little put a little hand there because you're coming in from the top. In my opinion, especially when you're trying to get these guys to be really chill, really tame, amazing water monitors, that if you're opening the cage from above, right, just like you see right here, that this lid opens directionally upwards and downwards. If you're always coming from above to get your water monitor, I think that their natural instinct is to be defensive with that, right? So right now, you guys can see this, I'm coming from above with Xander, no big deal, right? I was able to touch him, no big deal. But if this guy was skittish and he, he didn't have the size that Xander has right now, he doesn't have the confidence that Xander has right now, if it was a hatchling and I just came straight from above and grabbed him, he's going to be a lot more defensive. A lot of times you're going to see them try to tail whip you. They're going to try to bite you. They'll at least flare up, you know, their throat. And uh, it's it's going to make it a lot more difficult in my opinion. So I suggest um, to build a cage with front visibility and to build a cage with a door that either opens outwards that has visibility, like you see here, that it's opening upwards and downwards, that they're not coming from above, they're coming from the front so they can see you bef as you approach the cage as well as when you're opening it. So I put a little hand right there with the check mark and a check mark for visibility, or you could have a cage that slides. It goes left to right. You can see the little arrows right there. It's got visibility and as you open the door, just like I have, he can see you, you know, you can see him and it's, it's more comfortable for them to go ahead and watch you approach them, open a glass sliding door, for example, and then interact with them. The last tip that I didn't write down in this little 
uh, notepad right here was just a pro tip. My suggestion is that you build a cage that's higher off the ground. So right here, I'll go ahead and back up. You guys can see that my cage is floor to ceiling. I'm, I'm six foot five, so I'm a pretty tall guy. This is over an eight feet tall cage, floor to ceiling. When this guy was a baby, I had a vertical cage that was pretty skinny. It was about three feet wide, two feet deep, but it was over six feet tall. Um, about the space from this pillar over to the wall. That was his first cage when I got him when he was a hatchling. And the reason why I, uh, I ended up getting a cage like that is I thought as a the instincts of a water monitor, right? They're always hunting for food. They try to attack things from the air when they can. They, they climb trees, they're very arboreal, and they're hunting quite a, quite a bit of times from a tree and lowering themselves down sometimes to get their food or to pounce on them because they need to be able to get to their food without spooking them, right? So if you keep that in mind that these guys are arboreal creatures, they love to climb, you would want a cage that's, that's vertical and can be higher off the ground uh, for two reasons. One, it allows them to do a lot of climbing if you build a vertical cage um, and if it's higher off the ground. That second reason, this pro tip, is for pets. So if you have dogs or you have cats or you name it, if your water monitor's cage is down on the ground and your pup's walking around all the time, that could make it a little bit more difficult to build trust with your water monitor. Um, maybe not, right? But in my opinion, it, it can definitely help if you do that. So Xander's just enjoying his tub right now. So we'll kind of just jump right back into the, uh, the taming care tips. Um, so far we just talked about cage and different setup. We talked about the do's and don'ts. We said uh, don't have a cage that opens from the top. Do have a cage that's got visibility. Xander, you're in the way. Keep going. You're in the way. What are you doing, big dog? What are you doing? He's going to bask over here. The lights right here are UVA, UVB bulbs. They're not on right now, but uh, the heat emitters are. So he's going to go soak up some heat real quick. Nice, he just got it all filthy. <laughs> so anyway, do's and don'ts. Do try to have an open, have a cage where the door opens outwards or slides left to right, and then it's visible no matter what. Try not, and if you can't avoid it, great. Have a cage where you're having to open the lid from the top because then you're coming from above the monitor and you could spook them on a regular basis and it'll make it a little bit more difficult. So next thing that we're going to jump to is pretty simple. This is actually gear. I think it's pretty important to have gloves, tongs, and a hoodie. So right now I'm not wearing a hoodie because I don't have to pick up Xander very often anymore. But on the outside of my cage, you guys might have noticed, I got all my tools Tongs for feeding, which I'm going to use here in a little bit when we feed the quail and the rat. Um, a heat gun, which is pretty important. It's, it has nothing to do with taming, though. And uh, typically, I would wear gloves. Now, because I'm not picking Xander up all the time anymore, unlike whenever he was in a hatchling, you know, I was picking him up constantly and letting him, you know, climb up my legs and climb all over my arms, my shoulders and whatnot. Having gloves was uh, a really big help. So that way, you know, if they do climb on your hands and whatnot, if they are going to bite you, if they are going to whip you, claw you occasionally, you're not actually going to get injured, which means you're not going to have that knee jerk reaction where, you know, cuts or bites you and you pull your hand back. Um, that could spook them as well. So just little pro tips, basically, that I'm giving you guys that could potentially help. And then uh, the last one is a hoodie. The reason I recommend a hoodie, just like I recommend sweatpants, um, is if you're going to let your water monitor climb on you, which is absolutely the goal, uh, you don't want it to injure you. I have so many scars on my hands and my wrists and my arms um, that, I mean, I could show you guys. And it's all from letting this guy climb on me when he was a baby because they just have razor sharp claws. So, right, if you look at Xander's claws right now, they're pretty filed down. And that's because since he was a baby, I've built him cages that had a lot of height to them and allowed them to climb, right? So he can climb on this. He can climb right here. The reason I have all these smaller wood pieces is that he has some traction. He can grip onto something and pull himself up. And when he's sliding down, just so he doesn't slide down and then hit the, uh, the bottom, he can drag his back feet and his tail 
you know, around the tub and drag his back feet on these little pieces of wood. So this is just, you know, one small example with the cage I built for him right now that I allow Xander to climb. Same thing with this pillar right here. Um, Xander climbs up and down this pillar all the time just to get up to the basking spot if he wants to take a shortcut from coming around here. So we'll keep on going so we can make some progress. But if you have gloves, tongs, and a hoodie, it will help. Um, second one, well, third one you guys want to know is about body language. I wrote down a couple of things for you, you guys can look at this. Tongue flicking, you want to be aware of what's happening whenever they tongue flick. Tail curling, throat puffing, hissing, and having a taller stance. So for tongue flicking right now, we're going to check this out. Xander's not flicking his tongue. He's just chilling. There it goes. Now he's flicking. If I move my hand over here and I wiggle my fingers, he's like, whoa, what's going on? That That's basically showing brain activity. It means he's paying attention. He's smelling. He's tasting. He's learning. If you can get a, monitor, a water monitor to tongue flick constantly when you're around him, that's excellent. And it means that you'll have an easier time for for socializing and taming him essentially. If if I come into a, a water monitor's cage or I'm approaching the cage and it's let's say a hatchling and you're not seeing the tongue flick very often, that means that he's kind of defensive and you need to wait a little bit longer before potentially approaching him or potentially approaching him a little bit slower. So that's the tongue flick. The uh, next one is the tail curl. You can see Xander's tail is just really relaxed right now. If a water monitor is going to whip you, you're going to see from the end the tail curl and then it's going to, so you can see he's resisting me now, it's going to curl all the way like this, okay? When that happens, that means he's basically ready to strike and he's balled up his tail and he's ready to flick and oh my gosh, it hurts so bad. If any of you guys have ever been flicked by a, a, a reptile's tail, a water monitor is one of the worst animals you know, reptiles to get whipped by. Cause trust me when I say they're obviously, they get a lot larger than the average reptile, you know, especially iguanas, which are known for whipping. But I mean, these guys are solid muscle in their tail. Um, and it's almost entirely pretensile, not, not a hundred percent like some other mammals are or uh, reptiles that can literally grab things with their tail. Water monitors can't grab things, but they, they have a lot of control over it. It hurts so bad. I got whipped by him when I was, uh, I want to say he was six months old when he first whipped me and I had a welt for like two days. It, it was bad. So that's the tongue flicking one and uh, tail curling. Next one, throat puffing and hissing. So right now, Xander's throat, it's not puffy, right? I can pet him. I can give him massages. No big deal, right? Sometimes you guys might hear him in the videos where he's breathing. It's not the same as hissing. If you guys have seen videos of, you know, animals hissing, it is very distinctive. So big, big deep breaths is what they do whenever they're hissing. They do that all the time, right? So big, deep breaths. He's like, oh, what's that noise? What are you doing, who man? And uh, the, you can see when he's breathing that his throat is getting larger and then retracting. And it's expanding and retracting. When they're defensive and they're actually puffing up their throat, um, it's like, hey, back away, buddy. You're, you're moving a little bit too quickly. So if you see a, the throat puffing up, maybe you want to approach your water monitor a little bit slower. Maybe you want to wait a second before you continue to approach him. Those are like little body language signs you need to pay attention to. And uh, the last one, which usually goes hand in hand with the throat puff, is uh, having a taller stance. So Xander is like plopped down on his his heating tile right now. He's absorbing a lot of heat on both his back and his belly. If he was highly defensive, and let's say he was down here and I came in the cage too fast, his throat's probably gonna puff up, his tail's gonna curl and he's gonna get ready to flick and whip, and he's gonna have a much higher, taller stance, right? So you can see right now, Xander's like this. When a water monitor is really defensive, especially when they're trying to act bigger than they are, it's like a cat, right? They go like that they puff up and they stand way taller. So if a monitor is doing that, that's just another piece of body language you need to pay attention to that uh, can help you guys tame them a little bit quicker. If you're aware of what's going on, then you can know if you're going too fast or if you uh, can speed it up. You know, The tongue flick is the number one thing I would recommend you guys pay attention to. So right now he's like, nothing, nothing. I come over here and I wiggle my fingers. I play with this. These little fake leaves. He's like, what's going on? 
what's going on? I get all these tongue flicks because he's thinking, right? That means that I can potentially move a little bit quicker. Um, last two things before we get into, well, last thing before we can get into officially how to tame is the requirements. The requirements for actually effectively taming and socializing a water monitor is repetition and patience. I'm gonna zoom in on this, guys. Repetition and patience. If you are not patient and you do not basically do the same thing all the time, every time, it will take longer, doesn't mean you won't do it, but it will take longer to tame your water monitor. So when I say, um, I'll give you guys an example. When I say, you know, have gloves and have a hoodie and have tongs, if I'm gonna feed Xander these, you know, quail and, and rat, which I'm gonna do right now, if I feed him differently, these quail and rats every time, it's gonna be a lot harder to gain, gain his trust and to have him socialize with me and be more tame. So if I don't use the tongs every time, I'm likely to get my fingers bit, which means I'm gonna have a negative experience, I'm gonna be bleeding, I'm probably gonna have some knee-jerk kind of reaction because you know he bites me, which means it's negatively gonna affect him, taking longer time in order to get him socialized. So right now, I'm gonna use the tongs. I don't use gloves anymore because Xander's you know, as tame as they come, but whenever he was a baby, I use gloves all the time. I'm gonna grab these guys and I'm gonna show you how I fed Xander, with the one exception of normally I'd be wearing gloves right now since he was a baby. Oh, let, me, let me turn this light back on. There we go. The timer just went off as normally when he's about to go to bed. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do this. Now he's immediately paying attention. He knows there's food in here. Look at the tongue flick. He knows exactly what this is. If I wiggle it, right? It's a way to get him to pay attention. So how you would do this is you slowly bring it closer to him and then let him eat. Now, most of the time, if you're feeding, you know, the feeding is, in my opinion, the easiest way to build trust with a water monitor. If, if you're going to feed him, you want to feed him the same way, which means I'm going to let the monitor come to me. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to kind of wiggle it right here. Let him come to me. All right. Some of, the, some of the people I've seen online will just bring food straight to them and they haven't even got to the point where their water monitor is calming down, where they're showing the tongue flick. They're not showing aggressive stances or defensive stances like the puffy throw, the tail curl, you know, a taller stance. You got to pay attention to those. So let's say Xander has, while well, I feed him another one, let's say Xander is not flicking his tongue. And then he starts to flick, right? Then I can bring it closer to him. And the idea is that I would let him climb on my body to eat the food. So right now I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to show you how I would because I don't want Xander to climb on me. I'm going to lure him, right? I'm going to make him work for the food. We're going to move this now so he doesn't come and just get the rest of the bowl. But you, the idea is that you make him work, right? If you're making him work and you're getting him to come closer to you every time, then it will work very effectively, right? So look at this, look at this, okay? If I wanted to, boom, I could have pulled it up my leg and Xander would literally climb my leg to get the food. That's the goal when these guys are babies, that they can climb on your arm, that they'll climb on your leg, something. So. Now we're going to go ahead and feed him this last rat. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make him work for it. Oh. Oh, you got it. It's too quick. So while he's chomping down on that, we'll keep going. So last part of this video is the specifics of how to tame. So I, I wrote down a couple of things for you guys. You can pay attention to this. How to tame. Interact with, with your water monitor every single day. Interact with every day. 15 minutes to an hour is what I wrote. You know, some people will have more time, more free time to hang out with these guys. More time, the better. But the idea is that it's repetition and you're patient. So if for the first several weeks or the first several months, your monitor is barely letting you get close to him and he's hissing and 
you know, he's showing a lot of those defensive signs we just talked about. It just means keep doing what you're doing the same way so he can learn that you're not there to hurt him. You're not this big monster because when you get these guys and they're small, they haven't they haven't developed all of the... Uh... <laughs> Look at him wiping his face on the side. Let's see, he usually gets a big drink after after he eats a bunch. Sometimes he sleeps under the water for a little bit. But anyway, to get back to what we were saying, they, they might not have built the confidence yet that they need in order to get to the point where they kind of just trust everyone, right? So I'll move this just so he doesn't get it dirty this time. So that's the first one. Just make sure you're handling every day, 15 minutes to an hour. My suggestion of things to do when handling, interacting with them every single day, uh, you know, give them pets. Let them climb on you. Feed them. Give them a bath. Fill up the tub. Let them swim around. Feed them in the tub sometimes. That's a thing that I did for a long, long time when Xander was a baby. I'd fill up the tub, put some, uh, you know, lukewarm water, let him hang out in there, and then I let him swim. I'd make him swim all over, you know, to get his food, and uh, it was pretty effective. The next thing we wrote down is always feed with tongs and use gloves and a hoodie. If you're not using gloves, you're just asking to get bit eventually. And like I said, you don't want to have that knee-jerk reaction where you accidentally smack your monitor and then he whips you on top of getting bit. It's just, it's going to be a negative experience. So I'm going to move this before he breaks it. Um, <laughs> that's another pro tip. Be aware that water monitors are very destructive unintentionally. So um, the next thing we wrote down here, let your monitor climb on you. Um, let your monitor swim in a full tub daily. Transport overhead. So that last one, transport overhead, I've never heard people talk about this online. Like I said, this is the purpose of this channel is to do in-depth videos on how to care for these water monitors. When Xander was a baby, he could fit in my hand, right? When I wanted to transport him from his cage to the tub, which was, you know, X amount of feet, I would take him out of the cage once I'd get a little tongue flicking and he was less defensive. I'd pick him up and I'd literally hold him above my head. I'd hold him all the way up to the, to the top reach that I would have way above me. And the only reason I did that is I noticed that Xander was significantly less, um, I guess like fritzy. Like he wasn't trying to get all over the place. He was, he'd calm down. He wouldn't try to kind of fight the transportation, I guess you could say, because I was holding him way above my head, way up in the air. Um, in my opinion, I think he felt more comfortable, just like these guys climb trees whenever they're babies, and then they hunt things that are down below them on the ground. That's why they call them monitors, guys. They, they're always checking out what's going on, and then they find their food, and then they're going to go try to kill it and eat it and consume it. And that's how they turn into these big monstrous creatures, is they, they always eat things that are smaller than them, right? And uh, I just think over over time, if you guys focus on those little things, it'll help a ton. I'm not saying you have to transport your monitors over your head. That's ridiculous. Okay, I'm saying for me, it helped. I'm saying when I would hold him like this, you know, my feet are below me and I just walk around with a water monitor in my hand and then I bring him to the tub and I I'd put him in. He was much less active when I would hold him above my body, way up in the sky and then bring him over to the tub and let him down. Um, so those are my pro tips for taming your Asian water monitors. Basically, it's gonna come down to understanding their body language, reacting to it accordingly, spending 15 minutes to an hour with them every single day. For, for me, I did that literally every single day for the first year, and uh, it worked wonders. And that's part of how Xander is so tame and amazing right now. But uh, if you guys can stick with those things, build the cages correctly, so that way you have, uh, just like this little diagram I showed you guys, you don't have cages that open up from the top. It, it, in my opinion, like I said, it helps if you don't have those and they're either sliding cages from the front or they open up from the front and that they have some visibility. So they're clear, it doesn't matter if it's glass or plexiglass or, or whatever. Um, Xander knows I'm approaching from inside the house every single time I enter my garage because he can see me. And uh, that makes a big difference. So hopefully you guys can take those tips and use those to either educate different you know, friends or family members that maybe have been considering these or they have a monitor and it's uh, you know, just kind of aggressive, kind of defensive and 
if people are having some difficulty, but like I said, the basic stuff it comes down to is being patient, you know, making sure that you're uh, practicing repetition and uh, showing these guys some lizard love like we know you guys like to. So if you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and shoot me a, uh, a direct message or put a comment below and uh, we'll make sure we try to get back to you guys. We do appreciate the lizard love. Xander appreciates all of the uh, follows online and people that subscribe and share this uh, information with other folks because that's why we do this. You know, We want to make sure that people are educated out there and they can take care of these guys properly. That means a lot to us. So thanks so much, everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned for next week's video. We'll do some more in-depth uh, care for water monitors. I think next week I might go over cages and how to build them and how to set them up. But uh, we're always open to input. So let us know. See you guys later. Have a wonderful day.